Back in 2020, I started collecting Soviets for Flames of War. This has uh, been a long time dream of mine, and I was finally able to get around to it. But one of the main things that was behind that decision was the massed armor formations that were available. And the thought came up of how much painting I would have to do. But no, I decided, yeah, I'll play Soviets. There's a lot of them, but they're just green. Can't be that hard to paint green. So there's a lot of issues with Soviet green. Primarily being, it doesn't exist. Or I shouldn't say it doesn't exist. Before 1938, when the Red Army standardized their green color that they painted their armored vehicles to protective green for BO, all their armored vehicles were painted in a dark olive green that they designated Green 3B. 4BO became the standard Soviet green used throughout the war, uh, seen on T-34s, SUs, ISUs, IS-2s. Pretty much every single green armored Soviet vehicle was 4BO. However, I say standard using that word very, very loosely. If you're familiar with the miniature wargaming community, there's a whole debate surrounding German Dunkelgelb, that yellow that they used. It's difficult to get an exact match as to what it was. And 4BO is kind of the same way. The primary initial problem that you're going to run into as a historical painter trying to match any color, no matter what it is, is it's going to be difficult to match that. External factors such as temperature, weather, and sunlight will all affect and change a color that is on attack. Photographs of T-34s taken during Operation Barbarossa are kind of difficult to source concerning the coloration of tanks due to the dusty conditions that surrounded Barbarossa. When a wrecked tank cooks off, it's going to mess up the original color of that vehicle. And T-34s, especially the early variants, they had internal fuel containers. And internal fuel containers mean that when that tank is hit, it cooks off pretty quickly. Here's two photos of T-34s. Interestingly enough, neither of them from the World War II era. This first one here is a T-34-85 knocked out right before the 1992 ceasefire in uh, Croatia. And then this second one here is a knocked out T-34 near Suwon, Korea in 1950. What color were these tanks originally? Some sort of green, maybe a brown? I know I'll never know for sure. So external factors can cause a lot of changes to color. But then there's another issue behind 4BO and from World War II even up to today, there's an issue with color matching. The printed standard for 4BO in 1941 was technically on paper as a standardized mixture. 40 to 60% yellow ochre, 15 to 20% zinc chromate, 10% ultramarine, and 10 to 20% white. Following these instructions using modern equivalents, you'll end up with a color like this. It's a light green, a little bit more yellow, a uh, lighter tint. This color is pretty close to the tone on vehicles present in various World War II museums, especially Russian World War II museums. Um, and that makes sense because they painted them before putting them on display. This color, however, is commonly referred to as Warsaw Pact Green because a lot of T-54s, T-55s, export variants of the T-55 were base coated in this color. Some unfounded sources have stated that the original chemical composition of 4BO wasn't stable and would actually darken over time in the elements and not lighten. 
you know, uh, contradicting sources refute this and argue the opposite, that it would lighten in face of the elements, the standard thing that happens with anything that's put outside in the elements in painting. Uh, but if you're wanting to go factory fresh and you're wanting to be paper accurate, uh, the, your best bet is going to be that Warsaw Pack green kind of color. Now, in 1942, the U.S. Army got their hands on a T-34, 76, and a KV-1. They put these vehicles through a series of tests at Aberdeen Proving Grounds, which was a fascinating study. Uh, I got a PDF of the reports that I'll include in the uh, description of the video. Uh, for purposes of color, though, the Army marked the vehicles as being this color which is a much darker green with a lot more blue in it than the Warsaw Pact green. And the T-34 that was gifted to us is still on display at Aberdeen. And you can see how dark that green is and even potentially some black spots of camouflage. 4BO was supposed to be a standard, something that could be easily replicated in every single factory. However, the problem behind that is how Soviet manufacturing worked. 40 to 60% is quite a fluctuation. You know, if a factory does 40%, it's going to get an entirely different color than the factory that gets 60%. And that's even assuming that they all have the exact same starting point as well, which can't be guaranteed. And so... From that baseline, it just gets worse throughout the Cold War. The factories would churn out tanks and base coat them with whatever green they had mixed up that day. The vehicles then shipped out to their various units or were exported, and then their elements had their way at the vehicles. I've gotten into this argument more times than I can count on Facebook with people trying to paint Russian green and some people saying that the color that you use for Russian green is Vallejo's refractive green, or something similar, which is a relatively close match to the Warsaw Pact green. I have a file on my phone with these photos saved. These photos are from the old Kharkiv tank factory in Ukraine, and they showcase a tank parking lot. You can look and see how many shades of green are present in all of these vehicles. The battlefront standard that they paint to is essentially this color here. This is the uh, shaded and highlighted and layered refractive green. However, with these BTRs, some of these greens look blue. There's one in that that looks almost yellow. You look at it for long enough and all the greens just kind of meld together. They're not all the same green. An old friend of mine posed a question to me once. He said, imagine we're all sitting around a table and we decide to all share what our favorite breed of dog is. So we go around the table, you know, I'd say Siberian Husky, someone else would probably say Black Lab. Someone else would probably say a pit bull. Another person might say a chihuahua. Another person might say a schnauzer or a terrier or a border collie. You know, everybody, in all likelihood, everybody's going to have a different breed of dog that is their favorite. But, as my old friend put it, a dog's a dog. Everybody's favorite dog, at the end of the day, it's still a dog. This applies to Soviet industry because... Throughout the Cold War, and even World War II, green is green. Doesn't matter what the exact shade is, so long as it's green. My best suggestion that I have to anybody trying to color match something is to paint different greens and just see which ones you like. You could have every single unit in your army a slightly different shade of green. You could have every single team in your army a slightly shade of green. Here's the picture of these damn BTRs again, with every single shade of green you could possibly imagine a military using. Every single one is right. These are all of my takes on various greens. 
from the Warsaw Pact style green, from more blue greens to tones in between. And all that really matters at the end of the day is if it's a color that you like. Now, you don't have to go as hard as I did and test every single one of these colors. I have the advantage of having a 3D printer, so I was able to print out a whole bunch of BMP ones and just slap colors on them to see what would happen, washing them with different blacks, browns, blacks with greens. Because uh, one of the things I do is I make uh, dip washes with uh, acrylic ink, so I'm able to control the exact pigmentation of that wash. Because as you can imagine, if you wash a model black versus washing a model brown, it's going to come out a different hue. So for my standardized Soviets, that Warsaw Pact green, it is refractive green washed with a, I call it a medium black wash. It could definitely be a much darker black, but it's not a really light black. And then I lightly dry brush Iraqi sand over the top. For more of the blue-green, I go for military green, washed with black, and then lightly dry-brushed with Iraqi sand. And granted, you can do mid-tones, you know, kind of mix little aspects of colors in to brighten them up. But, again, green is green. It doesn't matter which one, so long as it's a green that you like. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And if you made it this far in the video, congratulations. I know it's a short one. I'm looking at my timer here, and it's approaching 15 minutes, so I'm probably going to be around 10 minutes when it's all edited together for a short little bit. This is uh, basically a read-through of an article that should be up on Breakthrough Assault uh, sometime in the future. So I reused a lot of the information, really reused a lot of the photos, which it's all stuff I wrote and researched. So I'm going to include here the various sources that I came across when researching this topic. The most fascinating ones to me were the Aberdeen testing ground reports on the T-34 and the KV-1 because I managed to track down the original documents that the U.S. Army put out on their studies on the T-34 and the KV-1 and they were very interesting. Uh, so if you, like what you, uh, if you like what you heard, please be sure to follow, subscribe, like the video. Comment down below what you think on my take that Soviet green does not exist. It is whatever green you want it to be. Share this video with others as well. That helps grow the channel. So thank you, everybody. I hope you have a good rest of your day.